everyone it's Dr. Campbell and today we are going to focus on the CPT medicine section which is actually the last section of our category 1 CPT codes. Our medicine section consists of codes that fall under the range of 90281 over through 99607 and begins on page 627 in our CPT manual. As you know, our CPT sections do begin with a table of contents to a particular section. And immediately after, you have our guidelines. And in particular, here we have guidelines for add-on codes, which we've seen so many times before, separate procedures, which we've covered before, special reports, as well as imaging guidance. And then there is a guideline relative to materials that are perhaps supplied by the provider. I know by now that you know the importance of reading through your guidelines, and so we're going to jump right into the first subsection of codes, which begins on page 633. So on page 633, we have our first family of codes, which is codes 90281 through 90399. And here we have our codes for immune globulins. An immune globulin is actually a passive immunization agent that is obtained from a pulled human plasma. And this is a human plasma that is immune to a particular disease. Of note, the codes that you see on page 633 for immune globulins are only identifying the immune globulin product only. And the guidelines actually tells us that in order to report the administration of the immune globulin, a second code is needed, and those administration codes can be found in codes 963666767609637172963747474 or 75 as appropriate. Of note, modifier 51 should not be reported with this section of product codes when performed with another procedure. All right, next on page 633, as well as 634 and on, we have codes for immunization administration for vaccines and toxoids. Now, just like with the immune globulins, for immunizations, you're going to have a code for the vaccine administration as well as the vaccine product. So as it relates to the administration, we have subsection codes 90460, which begin on page 634, over to codes 90474. Again, immunization reporting does require two codes, one for the administration, the second for the substance that is being administered. I highly recommend that you take a look at the immunization codes because they do have some very distinctive characteristics. 9046061 are to report immunization administration for page, patients that are age through 18. And these codes are used specifically when counseling has been provided to the patient's family. So two things have to be met. Number one, it's for use through age 18 and counseling has to be provided. For 90460, you're going to report each vaccine that was administered per guidelines for 
vaccines that have multiple components, also known as a combined vaccine, you're going to report code 90460 in conjunction with 90461 for each additional component of a vaccine. Also on page 634, you have codes 90471 through 90474. Here, these codes are for immunizations in situations in which the physician or provider did not provide counseling and these are used for patients of any age range including patients that are through age 18. Now with these particular codes what you'll want to notice is that they are divided based upon the administration route that administration route being percutaneous intradermal subcutaneous intramuscular intranasal or an oral route you'll want to ensure that you are reviewing the documentation to capture not only what was administered to the patient but also the route all right, next up on page 634 and continuing several pages after, we have our vaccine toxoids sec section. Here, this is for the actual vaccine product. These codes begin with codes 90476 and go all the way over to 90749. Now, keep in mind, these codes are designed to report the vaccine product only. You still have to select a code for the administration. Please ensure that you review the subsection notes for this family of codes as it can be a little confusing and it just it's very helpful if you understand what the rules state. Next up, we're going to go over to page 679, and on page 679, we have our codes for, or 639, we have our codes for psychiatry. The psychiatry subsection begins with codes 90785 and goes all the way over to 90899. These codes, guys, have lots of subsection notes. I mean paragraphs upon paragraphs. If you're going to be utilizing these codes, you most certainly want to review each and every note that is available. Um, on page 640, we start off with our interactive complexity add-on codes. And you know the rules about add-on codes. Add-on codes cannot be utilized alone. Immediately following that, we have our psychiatric diagnostic procedures, which represents the psychiatric diagnostic eval with and without medical services. Immediately following that, we have our psychotherapy codes. I want you to notice, and this is on page 641, our psychotherapy codes are time-based codes, and then we also have some add-on codes that are used when performed with an evaluation and management service. So here, what we're saying is we have a psychotherapy service, but we also have an evaluation and management service at the same time. Immediately after that, you have your psychotherapy codes for crises. Again, there are rules relative to the psychotherapy codes, and it's critical that you review those guidelines. I cannot stress that enough the guidelines that appear in front of the section, the subsection notes, the coding tips, the parenthetical notes are all must read, especially if you are preparing for a national exam. Next up, page 643, we have our codes for dialysis. As you know, dialysis is cleansing of the blood of waste products when the patient's own body is not able to perform that cleansing function. Dialysis can be temporary, as in a situation of a patient that has acute renal failure, um, but it also can be given to patients that have end-stage renal disease, and those are patients that are not going to be able to recover unless they have a kidney transplant. 
I want you to notice on page 643 that we do start off with a bunch of parenthetical notes. Did I say how important those parenthetical notes are? I know you've heard me say this a million times. They are so very important. Immediately after those parenthetical notes, we have our first family of codes for hemodialysis um, that is presented with some subsection notes. Immediately after, we have our miscellaneous dial dialysis procedures. And then lastly, we have our ESRD procedures. I highly recommend that you take the time to review your ESRD codes because they have a lot of things going on. Number one. The ESRD codes um, 90951 to 90962 are actually reported once per month to distinguish age-specific services related to ESRD. But you'll want to note that we have codes for ESRD um, by a qualified healthcare professional in a facility setting. But then we also have codes, if you take a look at 90966, we have codes for home dialysis because dialysis can be provided in the patient's home. So the age is important, the number of visits is important, as well as the type of dialysis and where the services are being rendered. All right, immediately after that, the next set of codes we're going to take a look at are on page 648, which are our ophthalmology codes, which begins with some guidelines. Something that's very important over here to note is the difference between an intermediate versus a complex ophthalmological service. Additionally, you'll want to review guidelines for initiation of a diagnostic and treatment program, as well as what we call special ophthalmological services. These codes are divided based upon um, initially for the general ophthalmological services based upon if the patient is new or established in addition to the intermediate versus complex exam. In your special ophthalmological services, this is where you have some of the other services and as a, a patient that wears glasses I'm very familiar um, with these particular services because these are those things that um, actually cost a little bit extra when you go to the eye doctor so how many of you are um, familiar with that test where they're actually blowing that air um, in your eye your eye I forgot what that test is called but that is another service that is uh, listed here again take a look at the codes the code descriptions as well as the parenthetical notes all right, next up we have special otorhinolaryngeal services, and this is for your ears, nose, and throat specialists. And here you're going to see all different types of diagnostic or treatment procedures that are actually um, provided for special ENT services. There are some services that that you may think fall under this category that are actually provided and reported as an E&M service and not reported separately. Take a look at your guidelines to see what those services are. Other than that, we have um, different services for speech and language therapy services. So here is where you're going to have your ear exams, just to name a few. All right, next up, we have our cardiovascular section starting on page 657. And we're going to begin with our percutaneous coronary intervention. So here, we're starting on page 658. And guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are lots of guidelines relative to our PCI procedures. Not only are there subsection notes, but there are also lots of parenthetical notes um, that identify when you should be using additional code um, as well as when services are bundled into a procedure again if you are preparing for a national exam each and every subsection note must reading each and every parenthetical note must reading 
All right, so on the bottom of page 661, we have our cardiography services, codes 93040 to 93042. And guys, here, you're going to see services such as your EKG, such as in code 93000 through 93010. Take a look at those codes because they do start off with one comprehensive code that includes the EKG machine, the reading, the interpretation, but then they're also broken out to splitting that service apart. Then immediately after that, you have your cardiovascular stress test. And this is where the patient is either on a treadmill or they're on a bicycle with continuous ECG monitoring. Speaking of monitoring, next up on page 662, we have our cardiovascular monitoring services. And these are diagnostic medical procedures that use in-person and remote technology to assess the cardiovascular rhythm. So here you're going to see things like halter monitors um, but also guys there are lots of definitions that you'll need to be familiar with that are outlined on page 662 such as attended surveillance electrocardiographic rhythm derived elements and mobile cardiovascular telemetry again lots of subsection notes parenthetical notes you name it it is there on page 664, guys, you have codes for implantable, insertable, and wearable cardio device evaluations. And guys, page 664, 665, 66, lots and lots of subsection notes that are honestly, guys, must reading. And here what you're going to see are the different services that are designed to test the device. You remember how in the surgery section we talked about insertion of a device? Well, once that device has been inserted, it has to be interrogated. It has to be monitored to make sure that it is actually functioning properly. All right, over to page 669, we have codes for echocardiography. Here we are monitoring the sound waves of the heart and great vessels. Guys, 669, more subsection notes. I know you're thinking more. Yes, guys, more and more. Keep in mind with CPT, the guidelines are not all situated in the beginning of the manual. They are spread throughout the manual. And so if you're gonna be taking a national exam, do yourself a favor and review all of the guidelines from cover to cover. Next up, page 671, we have our cardiac catheterization codes. A cardiac catheterization is generally a procedure where the provider inserts a catheter into um, the femoral artery. That's the artery that's in the groin. They can also put the artery of the catheter in the radial artery or the wrist. In either case, the catheter is threaded into the blood vessels into the patient's heart. And in most cases, what you're going to see is that the provider does some type of angiography um, that allows them to check for a blocked or narrow blood vessel. So, of course, guidelines begin on page 671, continue on page 672. These codes, guys, are divided based upon right heart, left heart, as well as what other interventions are done. There are a couple of tables for cardiac catheterizations. Again, guys, must, 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 must read. All right, next up on page 681, we have our EP studies. That's your electrophysiological studies. And in the surgery section, you actually have EP studies or EP services as well. So an electrophysiologic study is actually a test that looks at 
how well the heart's electrical signals are working. In other words, it's looking for abnormal heartbeats or abnormal rhythms. In the surgery section, guys, the EP codes are designed to correct an abnormal rhythm, whereas in the medicine section, we are detecting for that abnormal rhythm or that abnormal heartbeat. Page, guys, 681, 682, lots of subsection notes, must, must, must reading. All right, next up, we have our non-invasive physiologic studies that start on page 686. And um, here, guys, you're going to see um, vascular studies. And these vascular studies um, include the patient care that's required to not only perform the study, but also for the supervision and interpretation of the results. And here, you're going to see... Um, terminology such as a Doppler um, and so you're probably thinking wait a minute that sounds like the ultrasound services but these particular um, diagnostic studies um, are a little bit different there are some rules guidelines on page 686 that you'll want to take a look at because they're going to define terms such as a duplex scan or a physiologic study and it tells you um, essentially what each study requires and you're going to see some terminology that you are familiar with such as a limited study versus a complete study and that's so important because your code assignment is going to be determined based upon what type of study the patient has. All right, next up, we're going to go over to page 689. And 689, we have our pulmonary section. So here, guys, you're going to see things like breathing treatments and spirometry services. This is all for the lungs area. Again, make sure that you're paying attention to subsection notes, parenthetical notes, guys. You know the drill. Next up on page 692, we have allergy and clinical immunology. Again, this particular section starts off with guidelines. So here you have services such as allergy testing, ingestion, challenge testing, as well as therapy for patients that actually have allergies. So here in the Midwest, um, a lot of us suffer from all different types of allergies related to pollen and trees, you name it. We definitely have it. Next up, page 695, we have our endocrinology services. Over here, you're going to see codes for ambulatory continuous glucose monitoring in uh, an interstitial tissue fluid. These codes um, do have some specific requirements. Uh, one in particular, this is um, used in a situation, um, 95250 is when we're capturing data for a minimum of 72 hours. So guys, again, rules, rules, and more rules. Immediately after that, the same page. Uh, page 695, we have codes for neurology and neuromuscular procedures. Guys, it starts off with more guidelines. I don't know how many times I can say this. If you're going to be taking a national exam, knowing these rules are going to be important. Now, keep in mind, you're just learning CPT coding. You're not going to memorize all of these rules, but, you know, if you can start off knowing where they are, you know, that those guidelines actually exist. That actually goes a long, long way. Um, in this particular area, one family of codes that you'll see listed here are your sleep medicine codes. And guys, there are so many definitions on page 695 and 696 related to sleep medicine studies and these definitions are going to be important because when you have a medical record in front of you you're going to be expected to apply the rules that are stated here as well as select the appropriate code based on 
your documentation. And one word in the code makes a huge difference. For example, if you look at 95806 and 95800, as you start to look at the code, you'll see some similarities, but you'll also see some differences. And it is those differences, guys, that impact code assignment. Over here, you're also going to see codes for EEG, electroencephalography. Uh, one example of a condition that a patient may have that necessitates that test is a patient that perhaps has seizures. All right, guys, next up we have on page 709, and there were a whole host of um, neuromuscular studies um, that I just did not have time, guys, to go into every little thing. All right. So next up on page 709, we have our medical genetics and genetic counseling services. And these services are provided by a trained genetic counselor and could include a structured family genetic history, pedigree construction, analysis for genetic assessment, as well as counseling. These are time-based codes, and in your CPT manual, we actually are instructed how to report these particular codes and what time has to be documented. All right, immediately after that, on page 709, we have our adaptive behavior services. And adaptive behavior services are actually addressing deficient adaptive behavior, such as impaired social communication or self-care skills, as well as maladaptive behaviors or any other impaired functioning secondary to a deficient adaptive or maladaptive behavior. On page 710, we start off, guys, with definitions. And let me just say something, guys. On the day of the test, you really don't have time to be reading the guidelines for the first time. This is something that you need to walk in the door having read already so that you're like, oh, wait a minute, there's a guideline relating to that particular question and you can quickly identify that service. So on page 710, we start off with our adaptive behavior assessments immediately following our um, adaptive behavior treatment codes. So guys, take a look at these codes, take a look at the guidelines. There are several tables that provide you with a guide to the selection of these codes. And in the 2019 version, there are some category three codes that may also be used. So it's important to note all of the rules. Next up on page 712, we have our central nervous system assessment test. And guys, it starts off on page 712, 713, and 714 with tables and lots of reading. Uh, one thing I will say regarding the table on 714 is that it really helps you narrow down and isolate the code that you are going to be selected. And then other services that you're going to see here and they start on page 715. You have your developmental behavioral screening. You have assessment of aphasia and cognitive performance testing. All right, guys, on page 716, we get into health and behavior assessment and intervention codes. These codes actually describe psychological, behavioral, emotional, cognitive, and social factors that are important to a patient's prevention, treatment, and management of their physical health problems. This particular section starts off with guidelines. These codes are um, divided by several characteristics, and you'll want to make sure that you pay close attention to what those different characteristics are. All right, next up. Probably one of the most challenging areas of the medicine section are the codes for hydration, therapeutic, prophylactic, diagnostic injections and infusions, and chemo and other highly complex drug or highly complex biologic agent administration. 
Now guys, I have to tell you that one thing that is very, very important, and it is the rules that begin on page 719. This has to be one of the most complex areas um, to code, um, especially in the emergency room setting, primarily because in a fair amount of cases, there is a lack of documentation that helps uh, support the code assignment. Nonetheless, there are a few things you need to know. So number one, you need to understand terminology. Terminology such as an injection. An injection actually delivers a dosage in one shot rather than over a period of time. An injection can be administered via a variety of routes, including subcutaneous, intramuscular, intraarterial, and intravenous. Another term that you'll want to be familiar with is infusion. Infusion is where intravenous fluids and or drugs are infused or administered over a period of time, and this can be for a diagnostic purpose or a therapeutic purpose purpose. Another term that you'll want to um, be familiar with is an intravenous push. An intravenous push is generally medication that is given for an immediate effect. Immediate meaning that usually in um, three to five minutes the patient is going to be given some relief which is different than um, an infusion because infusion is usually about 30 minutes or more so as it relates to these services there's a couple of things you have to ask yourself so why is the patient here what did the patient receive how did they receive it and how long did it take all of this information has to be documented in the health record so if you go over to page 718 you're going to see our codes for IV hydration these are codes 96360 through 96361 and they are intended to report hydration infusion to consist of pre-packaged fluid and electrolytes however they are not used to report infusion of drugs or other surfaces. This is, or substances, this is primarily, guys, for hydration. Hydration IV infusions typically require direct supervision for purposes of consent, safety oversight, as well as intra-service supervision of staff. One of the things that you will notice is that these codes are time-based codes. Also, rules tell us we do not use this code or family of codes when the provider just wants to keep the vein open. They'll write an order that says KVO. All right, next up we have therapeutic prophylactic diagnostic injections and infusions. And believe it or not, we actually saw or I mentioned these codes about 30 minutes ago, guys. So remember when I went over immune globulins at the very beginning and I mentioned that with the immune globulin codes, those codes represented the product only? Here is where you're able to pick up the administration code that reflects how the immune globulin was administered. Now, these codes are not only for immune globulins. They are for diagnostic prophylactic and diagnostic injections and infusions but these codes do not include chemotherapy or highly complex drug or highly complex biologic agent administration these codes guys are time-based codes and one thing I want to mention and you'll learn about this as you're reading through your subsection notes is that a lot of these codes have the words initial and subsequent check out the subsection notes related to the hierarchy of these codes in terms of when you're going to report something as initial versus subsequent definitely must 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 read 
All right, page 720 and 721. Here we have our codes for chemotherapy. Again, time-based codes divided based upon the route of administration, divided based upon initial versus subsequent. And again, guys, it is preceded by subsection notes. All right, next up, guys, on page 722, we have photodynamic therapy. And here you have codes where they are actually treating certain lesions that are on the skin. Next up, page 723, we have special dermatological procedures. And again, guys, more services that are provided from a skin perspective. Please note the characteristics of each of these codes as they do have certain characteristics that have to be documented in order to report these codes. Next up, page 724. Here you have your physical medicine and rehab codes. So starting on page 724, you have your physical therapy evaluation, which is preceded, guys, with some guidelines and then you knew I was going to say that there are guidelines that precede these codes so the first three codes in this code family represent your physical therapy evaluation 97161 to 97163 you'll notice on page 725 there are certain characteristics that have to be met when you are utilizing these codes. The fourth code, 76164, are for physical therapy re-evaluations. On page 726, you have your occupational therapy codes. I guess I got a little ahead of myself. Your occupational therapy codes, 97165 through 97167. These are your initial eval codes. Notice the bulleted items under each code. And of course, we have 97168, which is the re-evaluation. Then on page 727, we have our codes for athletic training. Same setup, guys. First three codes are for the initial evaluation. And then the um, codes that, the code that follows, 97172, is for the re-evaluation. Now we're going to take a look at our modalities. Those modalities begin on page 728 and the modalities are divided based upon if this service is a supervised procedure um, or one that requires constant attention. Um, here, this is when you're going to see perhaps the use of a physical therapy aid or occupational therapy assistant. You'll notice that these codes are time-based codes and that is critical uh, for a fair amount of them. Then we have our therapeutic procedure codes. This is where you're going to see therapeutic exercises and interventions. Those codes are on page 729 and they are time-based codes as well. All right, next up on page 731, we have our medical nutrition therapy service. These are time-based codes that are divided based upon whether it is the initial assessment, if it's the reassessment, and we also have a code for a group therapy session as well. Next up, bottom of page 731, we have our uh, guidelines for acupuncture immediately followed by the acupuncture codes. These are time-based codes as well and they are also divided based upon whether or not electrical stimulation is provided as part of the service. Next up we have our OMT codes, osteopathic manipulative treatment, page 732 which is a form of manual treatment that is applied by the physician or other qualified healthcare professional to eliminate or alleviate somatic dysfunction and related disorders. Please note that these codes are divided by body regions and in the guidelines you are given what CPT defines as body regions for OMT. On the bottom of page 732, on over to page 733, you have your chiropractic manipulative treatment. 
and this is a form of treatment that is used to influence joint and neurophysiological function. Just like your OMT codes, these codes are divided into regions. Here, for CMT, we're talking about spinal regions. That does play a huge role in your code assignment. Next up, bottom of page 733, we have education and training for patient self-management. And this is where the provider is using a standardized curriculum um, for an individual or a group of patients for treatment of an established illness or disease or could also be used for situations to delay a comorbidity. You guessed it, these are time-based codes. They start off with some guidelines. All right, next up on page 734, we have codes for non-face-to-face, non-physician services, which are divided into two types. We have our telephone services, and then we also have online medical evaluation. Guys, there are specific characteristics that have to be met for these codes, so you guessed it. You'll want to review the guidelines on page 734. All right, next up, we're going to look at our moderate sedation code starting on page 736. Moderate sedation is also known as conscious sedation, which is actually a combination of medicines that helps the patient relax and block pain during a medical or even a dental procedure. Usually the patient is awake, uh, but more than likely is unable to speak during the procedure. One of the things I want you to notice, of course, it starts off with guidelines, but there are some um, additional guidelines on page 737, 738, guys, but there is a table on the top of page 737. These codes, moderate sedation, conscious sedation, are subdivided based upon whether or not the treating physician is also providing the moderate sedation service. Additionally, these codes are based on time as well as age, so you'll want to pay attention to those specific characteristics. Next up on page 739, we have codes for home health services and these home health services are to be used by non-physician health care professionals that is important if a physician does a home visit they are to utilize codes 99341 through 99350 all right so um, here, guys, you're going to see home health for a variety of services, uh, prenatal, postnatal, uh, home visit for respiratory therapy, or a newborn, just to name a few. And then lastly, guys, on page 740, we have our medication therapy management services. And these are actually services that are provided by a pharmacist upon request. The goal with these services is to optimize the response to medication or to manage treatment-related medication interactions and complications. These are time-based codes, and you guessed it, there are rules that you need to follow. All right, guys, this has been your walkthrough with the medicine section with Dr. Campbell. I wish you the best of luck.